So me and my dad are driving driving this car, and he looked at me, and we were passing the park, and he goes, "You know, son, back in the day." Uh-uh. He's like, back in the day, your dad used to throw down back there. Uh-uh. I was like, yo, me too. <laughs> to the second go around of making sense of adulting today <laughs> episode eight because we had to restart because i wanted to talk about a vagina <laughs> that's how it all no, because started you, no because you think you think it's awkward to watch also, we're going back a baby to, being we're born. going back to the topic here we go <laughs> no oh, i've got some unfinished business <laughs> All I, said, all I said, and it turned into a huge argument and a blow up that we shouldn't use this in the podcast because people are going to think I'm crazy for <laughs> vaginas ripping and tearing when a baby comes you out. You said your hoo-ha, your cooter. You said a bunch of different things. I think things. it's awkward for a male to have, like the dad, that's the most awkward thing or weird thing that they have to watch. So welcome to episode eight of uh, Making Sense of Adulting. <laughs> I'm sure you're all confused on what's going on. Just tell them. Today's what. topic is uncomfortable things that mom and dads have to go through. So we started recording and then Courtney had her take on it. Please refresh the audience. I don't. One, I think kids are cute and they're fun, but they're just not my thing, if that makes sense. So like no kid should ever be exiting my body. <laughs> And if it does, for some reason, if I somehow, God doesn't love me and I get pregnant, <laughs> I do not want the man that knocked me up, watch that thing come out of my body. God gives you life. <laughs> he you knows I probably shouldn't be a mom. I've already told you He's you're going to be a horrible mom. Heart. I've already told you you're going to be a bad mom. See? And I agreed that I don't want to be right in front of it yeah because I want to be on the side shit rips. Of, the, of the bit listen we don't need no, to, no, no, no. We, don't, thought, we don't need to go into details well we, it we, rips it shits <laughs> it bleeds there you go gruesome I guess I was told that it's like the right I guess it's like the proper thing to do is for the father to be there when the baby comes out you know the mom does the whole nine months and then you got to be there to watch it. Oh, you. So you plan you, on being right in the front, like front row. You got to cut. You got to cut the umbilical cord. That's, like how close are like, we talking? That is the that is the one duty. <laughs> like, of would the you want to be like right next to Ben? Well, don't act like you've never back. been right up next to one with your face. Ooh. You, Rodney. Oh, but this is for a kid. I'm not trying to watch that motherfucker come out and be there to have to like see it but all. That's, but that's your right kid. there. Okay, and I can see him after this motherfucker comes out. So you want the doctor to be the first person to see your child? The doctor, God, the person on the other side of the court of the of the tent, <laughs> and then I'll talk to talk to him when I when he's done when it's done. Okay. So that's why we had to start the episode over. <laughs> I guess because I brought screwed. it up, but we're still talking about it. So vaginas are neat. <laughs> Right? I guess that's a pretty good uncomfortable situation for parents. Well, no. I, I think guess it's not. I guess it's dad, normal. For a dad, it's kind of uncomfortable because I guess the choice of am I going to watch even though I fucking do not want to watch. Oh, I just said the F-bomb. Are we not supposed to say the F-bomb no, we anymore? Last week. We're all good. Okay. Um, rewind. I feel like that's just an awkward situation. I don't know because I'm not a male. Like, if you really don't want to watch and your your wife is like, oh, I'd love for you to see the baby come out. Like, you know? I think you. Might, I think we're probably going to have to. Even though I don't want to, I'm probably going to have to. I'm probably just faint. Maybe by the time. I don't, think, I don't think anybody necessarily is like looking forward to this moment. But Maybe by I the mean, time we all have kids, 
There'll be like a tube that just sucks you, the baby out. You just said you're not having children. Now, what is we all? <laughs> I'm just saying future tense for all of us. If we ever do, the, the <laughs> tube should be invented. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What's the, what's the next thing on the list? Can we get like... like because one, I don't think this is an awkward moment at all. I think like when a child is being born, it's like supposed to be one of the happiest days of your life. No one's thinking about ripping and bleeding and shitting. No one's thinking about that. And Cordy is like really shitting on having kids. Yeah. Do you know, like, all right. I don't know. Maybe one day my heart will change towards it. But as of right now, no. Well, okay. That's good. That's well, good. What's, all right. Now that so next phase, when you're... Still a baby. <laughs> I'm kidding. We well, what else is uncomfortable for parents as they get oh what the f- having to talk about sex for the first go around? Oh, is the sex talk. No, I think I think they're I think we're I think we're missing something. What? It's like do you know that I remember I remember having this conversation with my mom that there's always that one kid in the kindergarten class that's like trying to like whip his whip his stuff out and show everybody and like run what? around. I don't think what I, school uh, did you go to? I went to public I school, Courtney. Think, I'm like you in your I fancy shoes. I don't think I had a little Bradley running around trying to put his dick out everywhere. I don't think it. I, don't, I never saw that. I did. Did you see that? No. Okay, it must be like I don't a know, Kentucky. Like, so like, like teaching like, like, kids that... Teaching, teaching kids that like, yo, you need to keep your stuff in your pants. You Don't let nobody... Don't let nobody, say. don't let anybody touch your private area. Like that's an awkward conversation for parents to have with like a five-year-old Yeah, because that stuff happens in like preschool and kindergarten and stuff like that. And you got to teach the kids don't do that. Because at that age, they're obsessed with their privates. So I only know this because I nannied three boys and they were nutso. And they were always so fascinated when I would go to the bathroom. <laughs> that's a great word. <laughs> great word. <laughs> great word. <laughs> they're like, Courtney, where does it go? No. They were like, okay, so where does it come from? Three, they were three and five and a little bit older, but I started nannying them since the first one was born. And by the time I stopped nannying him, he was eight. Okay. So I was with these boys all the time. So you watched the transition. All right. I'm not saying, I'm not sitting here talking about their genitals. I'm, I'm not just saying giving that you, either. Okay. I'm giving you a phase of their life that was pretty <laughs> awkward, but it was also fucking hilarious <laughs> because they were li- like little boys and they, they obviously have a mom and a dad. So they've seen a woman's anatomy and a dad and male anatomy and they all had male anatomy, but they were all obsessed with private parts when they were like three to five obsessed <laughs> doing what like what was they, they obsessed. talking about yeah. them this like my I'm penis about. my penis Courtney where's your penis <laughs> like that kind of stuff so what I was saying is like I would go to the bathroom and they would barge in and I never locked the door because if something would happen and they would see me on the toilet and they're like where's your penis <laughs> Because they're what? obsessed with it. <laughs> and I see all that. Like, they just don't. But that that's like a transitioning oh, phase is where you have. the things I thought we were going to be spoken about today. Okay, but as a, as a parent, you at that age, you have to explain oh. to them that, when, that girls don't have penises. <laughs> like, you know, that I don't know if that's awkward. It is just kind of funny. And they were always obsessed with they're privates and it was just no, like and then, stop it and that's what i that, and that's what i'm telling you that it in school there was like that one little kid that would always like be obsessed with that what exactly what you're talking about and the whole class would have to get debriefed like the teacher had to write a note and be like yo so and so whipped his little little dingling out and started chasing people around the bathroom like that stuff happened and then your mom has that conversation like in high school still for for me (laughs) one of my yeah i was in a class where somebody whipped it out because they thought it was funny (laughs) wasn't funny what was his name what was his name i can't i can't oh you still know him. first name oh yeah he's one of my best friends i can't (laughs) initial i can't Just some person. Yeah, you that know, happened. You, you know who you, <laughs> you are. You know who you are. <laughs> but all that to say, keep you your junk in your boy. pants. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up getting in a lot of trouble for it. So oh, you if you don't teach them in kindergarten, they're going to do it in high school. So is the sex talk not uncomfortable? You don't think that's a... I don't think... I wasn't uncomfortable 
when I had it with my parents. You but I feel like as a parent, this. it is awkward. I'll tell you what's awkward for girls. Your your period. Yep. I was about, I was about to. Yep. I yeah, guarantee it. That's awkward because you feel like I, I know y'all have no idea what this is like. Like the first time I ever got my period, I had no idea what to do because I didn't want to tell my mom. Yeah. You know, it's like that. So like, I, you wanted to hide it. Yeah, I wanted to like, I didn't want her to know because you're almost shy about it, which is so weird. You know what's because it's this awkward phase of like, I'm transitioning into not a woman. I mean, I was, I mean, I was a little older. I was later, but it's just awkward. There's like a new movie out on Disney Plus about that, and it's got it's not it's not like straight up. It's got like it's like a cartoon and it's more beats around the bush kind of thing, but it talks about that and that awkward moment. And literally like Shana was just watching it the other day and talking about, you know, her awkward moments it with that. And that's exactly what I was saying is like how, like, especially for some parents, um, like how did, how did they deal with it? Like how yeah. did they deal with your emotions? Like my mom bought your emotions me a are book so from heightened. American girl, oh. even though I was like 14 years old, I'm pre- I was at the, I was going into my freshman year. Like, I don't know if that's later. I, I don't know, but she bought me an American girl book when I was about to get my learner's permit. It felt like, <laughs> like what the fuck? So I could read about it. She didn't want to talk to me about it. I also yeah. refused because I was stubborn as shit. I did not want to talk to her about it. I said, I got it figured out. My friend showed me. So, like, I didn't want to talk to her about it. Like, listen here, Courtney. This, is, this is how you get it done. It's been this two years. Be it's been two years for me. Speaking of circling back to, you know, dad seeing vaginas. What about just some friends seeing vaginas? The first time I ever got my period, I refused to put a pad in my underwear because that shit felt like a diaper. And I had to have a friend help me put in a tampon. So that is also awkward because if you don't know how to do it, guess who's got to show you? Your parents or your friends. You, know, you never fail to amaze me with the things that you say on this podcast. Well, I'm just being really honest. <laughs> being a girl's hard. Jesus. I'm glad we're not. <laughs> well, what are you, what's awkward for y'all? Fucking nothing. Oh, the first time you got caught jacking off. <laughs> I've actually still to this day I've never done that. Bull fucking shit. All my mother's life. He is. He is. I am so said serious. That every. You've never. Never. All right, I, that's really graphic, and I don't need to know about what you do to yourself. Nothing. But my reasoning makes me look like a whore, so I'm not gonna explain. Because you don't have to. Because you get it elsewhere. No, because I just don't see the point. How does that make you a whore? Because if you can go have sex. And have somebody else do it. The fuck do you need to do it for your own self? That's what I was just saying. And yeah, you but no. you, I didn't want to. You're making me sound. So you've like, never got caught doing that, have I, you, Junie? Definitely. <laughs> Is that awkward? It was just one time. I was like 12. Who caught you? <laughs> My mom. Uh uh-uh. uh. So was, that's definitely awkward for a parent. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't like in the action. But I definitely had something I shouldn't have had up on the computer. Some P O R N. <laughs> What? Do you not? No. No. I didn't know what it was then. It was. <laughs> what was it? I was like 12. It was like cute girls like, <laughs> like on Google images. <laughs> and my mom was like, what is this? Cute girls. <laughs> I was like, ah. I was like, I clicked on a Facebook link. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, who told that- you? Who told you to do All this? Right. I was like, me. <laughs> but I didn't say that. Oh, my God. Definitely, definitely oh. since a random person told me to do it <laughs> at school. Wait, did, did random boys, like, talk about that? Oh, yeah. About watching porn? Yeah, growing up? For yeah, sure. I didn't, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I never understood. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> I just don't understand. That has to be awkward for a parent. How do you, like, navigate that? Navigate what? I didn't have a computer Catching in my your room kid no more. Jacking off. <laughs> I don't think that's uncomfortable. I mean, I don't think that's uncomfortable. I mean, it's you're they're growing up. I mean, what do you <laughs> motherfuckers at a young age barely know how to use that shit? <laughs> so you start. You gotta. You gotta do something to figure it out. <laughs> you don't want to do it's like, just a part of growing up. I mean, you just start driving, is. then, buddy. Just get in the car and just. 
put that thing and drive and just take off? My first go around was I was put on spot. It was like I had to learn how I had to learn how to use a condom. I had to learn. So you never had a sex talk? No. Because Did you ever have health class? Yeah, we had a health class. They but didn't I talk mean, about condoms? They didn't bring in cucumbers? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> cucumbers for what? No, to we show didn't you bring how to put a cucumber. condom on. Oh, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, like, we didn't well, part that. of our sex ed was like, yo, like, you either wrap it or you're going to get a girl pregnant. So, like, <laughs> I remember everybody was like, up until, obviously, like, high school when obviously people were having sex more frequently, uh, everyone was like, if you don't wear a condom, dude, you're going to get a girl pregnant, like, off top yeah they didn't know like the probability was obviously it's not every single time you do like you're not gonna get a girl pregnant every time if not like this world would have been overpopulated oh, a absolutely. long time ago it already yeah. is overpopulated <laughs> aka why we'll never have a kid anyway <laughs> but no i don't know my yeah i learned that stuff in in health class oh, in middle school but i sure did my parents sex talk was like more or less listen we know you hear things if you want the truth come to us Oh, they give you the option. They were like, they were like, listen, if you want to know the truth, you can come to us. We're not gonna like force it down your throat. We're not gonna. They they really kind of like didn't want to make that situation awkward. So they're like, listen, we know you ride the bus. We know you hear stuff. If you want to know when the truth, that, come though? to us. Huh? How, how old are you? Or was like right when I started like started middle school, probably like yeah, that's when grade, I got it too. Twelve years old in middle school. <laughs> yeah, you having sex in middle school? No, dude. Oh, no, no way. I was like, damn, son. I got no. I got the talk when I was in sixth grade from my mom because she knew we were having it at school. Uh huh. So she wanted to preface it. Does that make sense? Like knew you were having what? Like new health class were, was oh, going to talk health. about sex. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about this. Which is kind of crazy because we were probably like twelve. That's what I'm when, saying. Okay. When did your all's parents find out you were sexually active? I told her the second I was. I, yeah, I told her. I told my parents the first. No day. way. Really. I did I not. Told, actually, you know, I I'm not going to say I parents. actually got a funny story for this. Are you going? What is so, it? So, all right. So, <clears throat> one time. All right. So, this is like my senior year. I had just turned 18. And it's the first time I'm going to the doctor as an 18-year-old. And obviously, once you're 18, you got to fill out your own paperwork and all that stuff. So, my mom's like saying like, oh, this is where you fill out like your health insurance. You got to put this here. Yada, yada, yada. Like, I didn't even know my social security at the time. So, she's like, you need to memorize this now. Like, this is important. All this stuff. So I was at like a like a specialty doctor because I had I had like something going on to where I needed to get fully checked. And you know when guys get physicals and stuff like that. The last question on the page, while well, my mom is like, first time at the doctor, help me like fill this stuff out. He goes, Are you sexually active? And I was not gonna answer it. I was gonna like wait till later, wait till wait till I went into the office and she goes, Hey Jenny, you gonna answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I have I have and a I bad checked, story about the checked, doctor too. Yes, and I went in that office. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Did she and get mad? So, is that how she found out? Yes, that is how she found out. And then um, when you were eighteen? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I lost my virginity at seventeen, so it wasn't it wasn't too long Same. after. That's a normal age. And, yeah. Right. Okay. And so um, when after the doctor's appointment was over, we get in the car and she goes, "Let's have let's have a chat." Oh. I was like, "Oh, here we go." <laughs> and I was like, "Are you using protection? Are you doing this? Is she on that?" Like, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> like, so I have a funny similar story, but I had already told my I told my mom like what, because she was just always in my business. She kind of knew what was going on, and I had a hard time. I could white lie, but I couldn't lie, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. I would rather them know, like, I'm going to be drinking or I'm going to be doing this. Just my mom, not my dad, necessarily. But we went. It was my first gynecologist because now they've changed the thing for women. But now it used to be recommended to get a pap smear when you turned 18, then 21, then like 25 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then get every year after that for cancer purposes. But you have to tell them if you're sexually active when you go to the gynecologist. I mean, they're, they're going to know. If they're looking down there and whatever. So we walk in. I, it's my first one ever. I'd never, ever gone. And we walk in. My mom's with me. She's in the room. I'm just legs wide open. She's asking me questions while they're doing it. And she asked if I was sexually active. And my mom goes, oh, yes, we are. We are very sexually active. <laughs> we... Yeah, like, oh, we are. Hey, mom, this. I looked at her and I was like, <laughs> <She's> like... <laughs> and I was like, 
excuse me, that's not your information to give. We are sexually active. I was like, what is this whole we thing? Then I got the talk of, oh, this was what was worse about it. Before I got up on the table, she was talking about like protection and the best protection is to be abs. What is the word? Abstinent. Abstinent. She was talking all about being abstinent. And then I get up and she's asking if I was sexually active. And my mom goes, oh, yes, we are. After she gave me the abstinent talk, like I, that I shouldn't be having sex. Oh Yikes. Yeah. So that was when I was 18. Okay. So you, I mean, but so your mom but knew? She knew. Or she guessed? No, she knew. That she was just saying. So is that how you ended up telling her? It. No, she knew before that. Oh, so you, I mean, so it was easy for you. Yeah. How I ended up telling my mom was I actually had plan B in my car, but it wasn't for me. It was for my friend. Not going to drop her name, <laughs> but it was for my friend and we were at the mall. And so my mom went to get something out of my car. I feel like she was just snooping. And she found it, and I just got a photo of it. And then she called me, and she's like, is that your plan B? Like, I just want to know, like, is it yours, blah, 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 blah. And at the time, I don't, I hadn't had sex yet. And I was like, I swear it's not mine. I'm not having sex. I would tell you, blah, blah, blah. So after I had that conversation, I think it happened, like, a couple months later, I just had to tell her, you know? Was she cool about it, though? Or was it yeah, more like... Yeah, she wasn't mad. Because you're pretty much getting older. So, like, she knew it was the day was going to come. I mean, she was like, yeah, she didn't do it until you married, like oh. everybody says. But, like... Oh, my parents never said that. They didn't? uh uh-uh. My family was really close, though. Like, we talked about everything. As soon as it happened, I told my mom and my dad. Yeah. I just didn't tell them the details because it was in my dad's car. <laughs> so... I just well, didn't. now you just told them. Well, no, they know now. They, oh, no, okay. My parents know every, everything. Every, every, every detail. Every detail of everything now. When I went to his childhood <laughs> home, <laughs> the things that... He would share with his parents. I was like, whoa. So maybe for your parents, there wasn't as m- many like awkward things that they had to experience. No, th- my, my family, we, they raised us kind of strict. And my, me and my sister just kind of just went with it. You know, like, we never really fought not being able to go to parties earlier, not being able to go drink and smoke, blah, 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 blah. So I guess, yeah, it was kind of simple for us. I, f- I feel like the only uncomfortable... St- Things my parents maybe had to figure out was like the drugs. And that was like, it was because we were both athletes. So even then, after a while, they were just like, okay, like, I mean, it's going to happen. You guys are going to do it. Just don't be stupid. Don't get in trouble. You know, but at first it was like, I guess that might have been an uncomfortable situation when they see that their athletic children are now doing stuff that can ruin their future. Not so much like fuck them up. Like them. Oh, that's a completely different setting. Then when my parents caught me smoking weed for the first yeah. time in high school. What happened that, to you, Jeannie? Oh, that was, ho- that was a horrible day. Oh, it was a horrible day. So it was in the spring because I remember I was, I was coming home from lacrosse practice. And it was one of my mom's friend's birthday. And we always go to Cracker Barrel for Holly's birthday. Shout out, Holly. And they were not talking to me at all. And I was like, what is going on? Like, why are my parents not, like, not talking to me? Like, not like all up in my business about how my day is? Because they're always up in my business. And <clears throat> I get home and they're like, hey, Jenny, we, we go sit on the dining room table for us for a second. We just want to chat with you about something. And I was like, all right, cool. And nonchalant. Came in, plop, drug test. They're like, my dad looked at me. He goes, you can either tell me or if you lie to me, your punishment is going to be way severe. Man. I should have just lied because I was still grounded for six months. Six <laughs> he goes, months? He goes, he goes, he goes, what's next? Crack? <laughs> Meth? This is an obstrosity. And I was like, dude, fuck weed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like caffeine's more addictive than this shit. You can drink coffee every day. I think that's why it was so easy to tell my parents. It's like, there's no harm. I'm not really fucking like obsessed with it or, you know, like doing it everyday type stuff but the the thing was is that that was my first time ever doing it yeah. like, and you got ever caught doing it. You got how caught. did they and know they got caught because they got caught oh yeah i yeah, know you caught. got caught they no they caught me because just people talking about it at school like because you know a lot of people start smoking at least where i come from around like 14 15 years old i was one what? of those i was one of those that's young right Yes, but I don't know. I, I, I guess I come from a ratchet place. I don't know. My sister but, is almost 
14. Yeah, so She'll be 14 she this might year. Be, she will she not might be, be puff, doing puffing that. and passing. No, 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 you know no, 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 no. You don't but, know her. Um, but either way, no. Um, word got around because like, I was a late bloomer. And um, yeah, one of the security guards that my dad knew from the school caught wind of it and um, told him. Man. Damn, your, the day of your school. It was like it, it. It was like a week within the week. Oh wow, you bad boy. Yeah, so I got busted. And did also, you, did oh go ahead, Junie. Now I was gonna say like it's just crazy to me because it seems like your all's parents were like really chill with y'all going out and like. I don't know. You all both seem very open with your parents. Like I tried to hide everything from my parents when I was when I was a kid. You I don't were partying pretty early though, right? No, is that that's the thing? Is like they wouldn't they wouldn't allow me to. I remember, I remember one time I I tried to tell my parents I was going to a friend's house, but I was actually trying to go to my first party. And again, first time for everything, just seemed to not go well for me. Um, so Look at this. So, so you just must be a bad liar. This, no. no, no, like. They're just, they, they like tracked my phone. Like right. they were really, and, and I think that they kind of learned from that because they, they weren't as hard on my sister. And I think that they try to be too overbearing with me. And again, my dad was a public figure in our community. Like he was okay. the fire chief. You, your fire chief son out here smoking weed and, and drinking in high school isn't a good look for him. Um, but no, I remember the first time I tried to go to a party, I was like, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to my best friend's house. And this is how like overprotective they were at the time. You just said that, your best friend. You uh-huh. didn't say a name. No, no, no. They they knew who it was. Oh. Like I said, I'm going to I'm going to my buddy Colton's house. Yeah. And they were like, oh well, you know, Colton needs to update his smoke detector. So they sent me with smoke detectors, <laughs> threw those threw those things away because I was like, I'm not even going to Colton's. Wait, so, they gave you smoke. They gave detectors? me smoke detectors to go install into my friend's house for me to stay there. Wait, did the when parents- I was 16, like I was driving, Courtney. <laughs> I was driving to my friend's house to install to smoke detectors. <laughs> in high school, wait. If he would have came to my house in high school, wait. How did they know he needed new smoke detectors? Because they, I don't know, my dad, my dad like would fix things around the house. Like he'd fix their toilet, their dishwasher, their refrigerator. Like he was always there like fixing stuff, cut their grass. So like they were so, your good family friends? Yeah, like they were, they were very, like we it's were very tired. such tight. a random thing to do that <laughs> they need new smoke detectors. Yeah. I thought it was going to be because he was the fire chief and he had to like do yeah. building inspections or no, something. No, no. I he, thought, yeah, I thought it was because you were smoking. No. They no. were like, don't be smoking weed. Here's fire detectors. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so continue so, with your story. Okay. So, so I end up not going. Right. So and, you toss the shit out. And of like, I thought I had it all mapped out. I thought I had it all mapped. I like parked down the street where my car wasn't visible, like passing by. And I am. Um, and so like, I'm in the house and my shoes are off and they're like, Junie, your dad's outside. <laughs> and they thought it was a cop. Cause he pulled up in his, in his fire car. He's the fire chief. So he had a police <laughs> car, but like red with lights on it and stuff like that. But in the dark, it looked like a cop car. <laughs> so my dad pulls up to the party. Cause he like finds out that I'm not oh, at my friend's no. house. How did he find out? He called, he called my friend's mom to make sure she got to the make fire sure I detectors. was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you, you laugh, but it's, this is straight up. So, so my dad pulls up and I just don't even think about it. I run out the front, run out the back door. Like I dip out the back door, no shoes on. I've left my shoes, literally ran out barefoot around the house, like down the street to get to my car and just jet to my buddy's house where I told them I was supposed to be. But then they already said you weren't there. Huh? But I didn't know this. I thought he <laughs> so just. So when you showed up, wait, keep going. Keep going. So, so he rolls, he comes in the house, takes all my friends' beer, like all their alcohol and stuff. Oh, this is my first. This is my no. first. This is my first party. Oh. So you definitely did not get invited to any parties. <laughs> not after. for a while. Uh, <laughs> So, oh. so he's like, he goes, he's like, where, he's like, where's my son? Blah blah blah. I know my son's here. Da 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 da. They're like, we don't know where he is, Mister Reddo. Like, we have no idea. And he goes, is that his shoes? <laughs> <laughs> And I drove to my buddy's house with no shoes on. And the only reason I got caught was because I left my shoes at the front door. He goes, there's his shoes. (laughs) Why did you take your shoes off at a party? We were chilling. Wait. People's houses have different rules, Courtney. You can't but be walking around a, people's houses with a you, party. You do not take your shoes off at a party. Yeah, like, like you got to keep your shoes on at a party. I okay, it like. was it was early in the party. I, it was my first party. Okay, like <laughs> so, who told you to take your shoes off? Huh? 
You, you just, just took a walk. You just took a walk. I, I know you, Junie, and I know you just, you walked in and you're like, I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first party. I'm here. Let's go. I'm not leaving. I was scarred. <laughs> my first party, I'm staying here. So yeah, first time I, first time I smoked weed, busted. First time I go to a party, busted everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been terrible. The whole party? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He didn't get an invite oh, after yeah, that. No. They were, you were probably the talk of the school for a while. We mm. had we had a girl like that, and she got exiled. Yeah, I almost did. I almost <laughs> did. But I, I can't. I, I had a good comeback after that. I had did a you good, throw a party? I had a good comeback. No. That, that was later on. Oh. Another bad time. You are reliving your glory right now. I see it in your face. <laughs> no, because Junie that was, that was, was a party animal. And made everybody take their shoes off. <laughs> okay, but on a serious note, not really serious, but like we talked about having the sex talk. Did you ever, did either of your parents ever walk in on you having sex? No, never. <gasps> Lucky. What well, happened could, to you? How could you have been in the position that that happened? I mean, I was at home. Did you, like, did you just not care? No. <laughs> What do you mean? You just a rebel child. Yeah, I, 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 would, I never uh, tried no, that. Absolutely really not. My never. parents were very laid back. Like I used to have sleepovers at my boyfriend's house in high school, and he used to what? sleep over at my house. Okay, I never slept over at my girlfriend's house, but I slept over at girls' houses. What? No, I slept like over my, like with my, like my female friends. This was like my actual person I was dating. <clears throat> That's, we that's, had sleepovers all the time. That's and our, wild. Both my of our parents, parents would knew. never. What? Never. Yeah. I had to. They would, if any girl ever came over, I had to leave the door wide open, just so they know what was going on. And mine there. had to be cracked. But even even when I was in college, I remember like like girls I was talking to, like I'd have them like try to sleep over. And my mom would still say stuff when I was in college. I was like, Mom, listen, no, <laughs> not no more. <laughs> we we had a nip we had a nip that in the bed. I was like listen I'm so wait, well, I'm how did they how did they catch you catch me what having sex she just walked in so was it like they left or were they there the whole time and then they were there Whew. okay so what did they do what did they just slammed the door and walked out but I just remember getting like don't be doing that blah 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 like warning like give me a warning like they felt uncomfortable you know like seeing that it wasn't like <laughs> mad wait <laughs> i need okay you don't have to go into detail what what was what were, you, what were y'all doing at the time oh my god they walked in because depending on what you say <laughs> what I'm so, what? like it wasn't like was it the the foreplay stage was it just like getting started or were you like no like i was throttle? fully on top <laughs> What do you mean? That's the worst. That was what I was hoping you'd say. Because I, I know, I know that your back was to the door. So yeah. So when they walked in, I feel bad you for your dad. You just didn't even know. Like you were still I, going. No, I heard a door slam. So you just got the ending of it. You didn't even know that they, when they came in. So you were just fully going. And then I <laughs> jumped up and sprinted to my closet. Oh, you better not have hurt that man. <laughs> He's fine. He has. Some issues with his head, I guess. <laughs> not, not naming names. <laughs> but you all know right, who you right. are, too. So y'all never had that awkward encounter. No, not that one. No, because we knew how to play our cards right a little bit better. Yeah, the car. <laughs> it, exactly. <laughs> anywhere, anywhere else. I remember I remember one time when I when I bought um when I bought the black Mazda, the one I had yeah. for like years and years. You bought me, it or Geico bought it? <laughs> <laughs> me and Geico didn't Kentucky, have a relationship Kentucky back then. Oh, it was, Kentucky. It was the Kentucky, Kentucky Bureau. insurance. <laughs> no, company. no, this was no, this was back when um, I think it was I think it was going to my sophomore year, and and so I was home for the summer, and I bought the car, and I remember the car was located maybe a half mile from my high school girlfriend's house, who I you know lost my V car mm -hmm. to, and. Me and my dad took the car on a test drive, and we drove by the park that I lost it in. You lost it in a park? Yeah, in in my car. It was like an oh, old, like abandoned car. park that you only lost like yours in the car too. Yeah. What? I, so, mine was in a bed. What are y'all doing? Y'all gotta we be are coming. being smart again. We didn't want to get caught. <laughs> I didn't like want to get caught. 
All right, cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's enough anyway so me and my dad are driving driving this car and he looked at me and we were passing the park and he goes you know son back in the day uh-uh. <laughs> he's like back in the day your dad used to throw down back there uh-uh. i was like yo me too <laughs> I've had enough. I've had enough of y'all. I can't take it today. I can't take it today. This this is gonna be one of is, our best episodes. This ever. was uncomfortable for me, and I'm not your I'm not your mama or your daddy. Wait, well, what's uncomfortable for our parents now? I feel like nothing. Mm. Getting there. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know either. I can't say what I was about to say. I don't. I really don't think anything's awkward now. Because they don't really. Uh, if they get that, uh, mom, we need to talk message. Oh, I, I do my that. My parent, my parents always freak out. Like, mom, we need to talk. Like something's going wrong with you. Even if it's just like we need to talk. Like I just got well, a raise. She's gonna be like, "What the fuck happened?" Yeah. Who'd you get? Pregnant? I don't think it's like awkward for them, but it's like worry like they still worry about us it's uncomfortable yeah you're right that's like putting scary them in as hell yeah and she's like call me now do i need to leave i will get i will be in a really bad mindset and i'll text my mom I'm like i'm so depressed blah, 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 da, 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 da. and then she's just like calls me immediately like she thinks i'm gonna like kill myself or something which yeah. i'm not going to but i feel like that definitely is something they probably worry about especially with us being away from home damn i don't know anything else for a parent right now Maybe uncomfortable for parents. Maybe big life decisions they weren't looped into, you know? Like if you had a girlfriend and you didn't tell them about it and then you just like proposed to her yeah, or something like that. Like I see people doing that shit and they don't even meet each other's families. That's wild. That's They're just up and wild. leaving. Yeah, or yeah. just leaving the states. Like, hey, mom, I'm moving to Canada or some shit. I feel like that would, that's hard to deal with as a parent. I kind of did that. I mean, I, t- I remember. I remember the day. I, for, I remember yeah, the you day. still talk reason. to your parents, huh? No, no, no. I'm talking about when I moved to Tennessee. Like I literally got the news and I went home and I was like, "Yo, <laughs> next month I'm moving to Nashville." But and you like, said what? for why though, huh? You said why though? Like you were going for? A radio oh, yeah, oh, you're talking about just random. Yeah, okay, somebody okay, was just yeah, like, "Hey, yeah, I'm right, just going right, to up right, and move." Right. I think somewhere, and then she's like, "Why?" I don't know. I just feel like I belong there. I think a hard thing to navigate in this time in our life is like the separation. Like, you obviously grow apart, but you still love each Like, I still talk to my mom and dad quite often. I know you, you guys do, too. But there's some people that don't. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that could be, like, the weird transition and f- make them kind of feel uncomfortable is, like, really, like, the separation. Or there are people out there that just cut their parents off completely. As they get older? Yeah. Because they didn't like how they grew up or they didn't like this. Like, I've met people like that. They're like, no, I don't speak to my family. You know, yeah. but, but then again, like everyone's family life is different. different, you know, but I feel like as a parent, like I would be, if I were a parent, I would be so Which scared be. and terrified <laughs> that I wouldn't have a relationship with my kid because of how I handled them growing up. That would I be guess. really scary. That does. Yeah. That just got really deep. But I feel like that's like one of the biggest things that you deal with in being an adult. Like I feel people get. I hear about, just that even at work, I hear about people getting in fights with their family and they're like, oh, I'm not going to see them for Thanksgiving or I'm not going to this wedding because of we got in this huge fight. Okay. It could also be uncomfortable if, you're, if your child hates you or doesn't like you. Yeah. Just, just because. I, I feel like that's, like you're doing your best that you can and the, like the kids doesn't like you or some shit or, or just doesn't acknowledge your efforts or something like that. Yeah. So that would be massively uncomfortable. Or step-parents. Like that's Ooh. a very uncomfortable situation too. See, so, yeah, none of us, none of us older, have that. Yeah, a lot of people, I feel like their parents wait for them to leave before they get a divorce. Yeah, and now they're having to deal with like new parents and stuff. And I feel like the the pressure on the stepdad or stepmom is a lot, especially when like the original mom and dad have been dating for like a, or have been married for like such a long period of time, and it's like twenty years of death, and it just ends, and then there's just a new person. It's like, yeah, how do you just t- switch that up? Yo, if that happened now. I would probably, yeah, no, I'd be fucked. Yeah, I'd nah. be, f- I'd be 
I'd be fucked. I would, yeah. I could, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I could, I don't, weird, I don't think right? I could accept it. No. You know what I mean? Like, my parents this month are going on 30 years of marriage. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, I couldn't, like, can you, could you fathom that? Like, being a grown adult and your parents splitting? I think whoever's, whoever fucked up, I'd probably, like, completely ice out for, like, a year or so. Like, who, it just depends on who, who did it. Cause after 26, 27 years, like, that's like now you chose to do this shit. Yeah. Like yeah. what the f- like now, motherfucker? Yeah. Like no, like yeah, that's that's, that's definitely an deal. uncomfortable situation. Thankfully, none of us have had to. Go thank through. God yeah, thank- and mom, dad. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. But uh, <laughs> this was a good. This was good. This one was a good like refresher to get us back going as our first like topic episode back. I'm sweating my fucking ass off in here. Why? Because I was laughing so damn much. <laughs> Junie definitely wins the dumbass of the of the show today. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my ch- my childhood could have been a sitcom. <laughs> like I was always fucking up. <laughs> but thank you guys. You were always getting caught. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't slick. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you guys <laughs> for tuning in to another episode of Making Sense of Adulting. This was episode eight. It looks like a gang sign. Uh, I don't want to get shot. <laughs> don't zoom in on that, please. <laughs> <laughs> it is your boy Radio Rod, Rodney Smith, signing out. Howdy. Later. Yeah.